Our look behind enemy lines continues today with the Dolphins. Here's a look at them compared to the Patriots. Last season, New England went 10-7 and was second in the AFC East. Miami was 9-8 and, and third in the division. The Patriots went to the playoffs. The Dolphins did not. The Patriots offense was sixth while Miami was 22nd. The Patriots D was second in points per game allowed while the Finns were 16th in the season win total for both teams in eight and a half games. Time now for the deep dive. Mike Giardi of the NFL Network joining us alongside Tom and Phil. And Giardi, I take a look at this Dolphins team and I think about the offseason moves that they made. And the one name that comes to mind for me, obviously, is Tyreek Hill. But when you take a look at the Patriots roster on paper and stack it up against that Dolphins roster, who has the better roster when you take a look at it? I think the Dolphins have the better roster. I think the other thing here that it, it's hard to measure, but it's been Camp Kumbaya for Miami. They're happy to be gone with Brian Flores. There was a lot of dysfunction as I did a deeper dive into what happened there than you expected. And yes, they won games under Brian, but there's a feeling like Mike McDaniels has sort of McDaniel has sort of empowered the veterans on that team. This is your team. Do with it what you want. Yes, we're going to guide you, but there's a whole different feeling there. And I think they have an idea of what they want to do on offense. They have an idea of what they want to do on defense. And I think in years past, even with some of that success I mentioned, they didn't really have a necessarily an identity or something they could sort of put their – hang their hat on and say, this is what we are, and we all believe in each other because I think they weren't sure that the coach actually believed in them. Here, Mike McDaniel has done nothing but – Praise these guys up and down. He feels like he has a really good team. We're going to see. But, I, look, I like their roster better. I think they have more high-end players than you do. And I actually think they have more depth than you do. Phil, I take a look at this Dolphins roster, and I just think that they are stacked, specifically on offense, when you take a look at that Dolphins team. I think we can all agree. On paper, the Dolphins, they have to be the better team. Yeah, I think that's fair to call them the more talented team. I think they still have plenty of questions. They're not a perfect roster by any stretch. I'd say the offensive line has improved. But it's still not a great group across the board. I think on both sides of the ball, probably in the trenches, you could look at different positions and say, I'm not sure that's a necessarily a championship level group. But I, I look at the coach first and foremost, and I hear what Mike is saying about Brian Flores. And you did hear all kinds of things coming out of Miami in terms of how people felt about working there. My question, though, is, Tom, is this going from Bill Parcells to Pete Carroll? Did mm. they swing too far in the opposite direction just to get people to feel good about themselves? Because I think there is something to that, especially with today's athlete and how they respond and how they perform well. But I think there's also a component of leadership where, you know, you don't necessarily have to be treating every podium session like it's open mic night mm -hmm. at the comedy club. And I think that's what I felt is coming from Miami right now. And I think what we have to bear in mind, too, you see Wes Welker cruising around there as an assistant coach. So much will fall to the assistant coaches as well to really prop up Mike McDaniel in his first year there. Because, look, I think a lot of things matter. When you're – the NFL, when it hires referees, it hires referees who are tall, imposing, oftentimes muscular. It matters how you look as an authority figure. I'm telling you, it's true. Look it up. <laughs> Mike McDaniel is the size of Mike Reese. I love Mike Reese. I would follow him into a fire. Is Mike McDaniel going to get that same loyalty? He needs his assistant coaches to be able to translate his message, and Mike McDaniel himself is going to need to be a little Napoleon when he has to be and bring the hammer down because, as we've seen, and I've had this theory for a long time, Michael Giardi, South Florida is a hard place to maintain the focus of players because there's an awful lot going on. Right, Amina? Oh, there is a lot going on <laughs> down in Miami. But, Mike, really quickly, yesterday we had on Tim Graham from The Athletic who covers the Bills. And he said something really interesting. He talked about Bills fans still looking over their shoulder at this Patriots team because of the fact that the Patriots have dominated for about 20 years. But how far is that gap between the Patriots and the Dolphins heading into 2022? I don't think it's that far of a gap. I do think they are better than you, but I, I think it's a smaller gradation than it is between the Dolphins and the Bills or you and the Bills because I think there's a huge gap between those two teams. I think the Bills are far and away the most talented team in the division and probably in the entire league, quite frankly. So there's that part of it. I think that's why when you guys were talking in the last segment about how this season starts and what your expectations for, I think we all have watched this camp 
And I think we probably have more questions about this team than maybe any team we've had in, I don't know, I, I guess you could put the Cam Newton year a couple years ago, but even then you still felt like there's a foundation of a good football team and you believed in Bill and what his plan was. Now it's been a few years removed. You lost in the playoffs. You haven't won a playoff game in three years. Like, wh what are you? And and what they've shown us here in training camp, which again we're being told it's it's just it's September's an extension of training camp. Well, if it's an extension of training camp, then you're 0 4, because that's how you played in training camp. So I'm really curious to see what it looks like because I think by and large it hasn't looked like it should look at this point of the year. Can I just say I'm not sure there that the gap is is certainly there. Like I I know Tom feels this way because we've gone back and forth on it. Sounds like Mike feels this way. Talent-wise, you can look at the overall talent level on both rosters and say the Dolphins have the more talented roster. I think the Patriots still have the better person at mm. the two most important spots on the team, meaning head coach and quarterback. I would take Bill Belichick over Mike McDaniel. I would certainly take Mac Jones over Tua Tunga Vailoa. So that, to me, might make up for, Amina, mm -hmm. whatever talent deficit there is when you're looking at the overall picture for both. Yeah, I definitely feel like that gap between the Patriots and the Dolphins just isn't that big at all heading into this season, despite all the things that the Patriots are dealing with this offseason. All right, let's take a look at some of the storylines with the Dolphins entering the 2022 season. Mike McDaniel era, that begins after Brian Flores got fired. Make or break season for two a tongue of Iloa. Tyreek Hill added to this potent offense. The Dolphins defense hasn't changed much personnel wise and the team hasn't made the playoffs since the 2016 season. So, Giardi, let's start with uh, Tua Tunga Vailoa. A lot of expectations on him coming into the season, a top five pick in that 2020 NFL draft. Just how much of this Dolphins team's success is going to hinge on how Tua looks this year? I think Tua just has to stay out of the way and not make mistakes. And I know that's not the kind of quarterback you're looking for anymore. I'm not sure he can elevate to that, that next level, certainly to the level of Justin Herbert, who was drafted one spot behind him, and that might be something that Miami will think about for decades upon decades. But to me, with what they put around him and the system that's in place, just manage the game, man. Get the ball to those guys in space and let Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill and Cedric Wilson do their thing. Mike Gusecki, they have a bunch of playmakers. Just don't screw it up. And I think McDaniel's smart enough, and he certainly saw the way Kyle Shanahan dealt with what you would feel, well, Phil thinks he stinks, but one of the lesser quarterbacks in the league, an average quarterback in Jimmy Garoppolo. So uh, if he can get Tua to play that level, I think they're a really good team. I think they're a dangerous team. I, I think he is smart enough, Tua is, to understand that what is at stake here for him and with what they've given him, just, again, just don't screw it up. But, Kern, does that make you a good quarterback if you have to go out there and just not screw it up? I mean, is that what you get a top five pick in the NFL draft for, for mm. you to go out there and just not screw it up? Yeah, not screw it up, guy. Um, no, that's not necessarily what you're looking for, and I think that's what Dolphins fans will forever kick themselves over is Justin Herbert to a tongue of Iloa, right, Rachel? I mean, they, right. they, they choose to a tongue of Iloa, mm -hmm. and Justin Herbert might be the quarterback outside of Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes, who's best equipped to just take over a game and do otherworldly things. Tua is a game manager, which oftentimes is fine. Tom Brady started his career as that. Mac Jones, I think, to, a, to an extent, is that. But he's a game manager who's really not that accurate, really doesn't have that strong an arm, and also gets hurt a lot. So I'm not looking for that. I think he can have good games and compile good numbers. But I just don't like, look at, watch how long this motion of his is. He couldn't get that off because he has to bring it down to his freaking calf to get the thing thrown. I just want to take a moment to appreciate Mike Giardi finally acknowledging that Jimmy Garoppolo is average. I never, I never said he stinks. <laughs> I've only I said wanna, that look. he is handsome Matt Schaub and that he's a, he's a pretty average NFL quarterback. <laughs> and now you're on the boat with me. So I appreciate that little company. Thank you. I'm going to punch you in the kidney next time I see you. Just be ready for it. A couple rabbit punches. It's going to happen. This escalated very quickly, did, but... Did. He's Mike McDaniel size, so that's as high as he can get. Oh, is, my is goodness. I, you know that's what? what? I, could, I could really just let you guys go back and forth for the <laughs> entire show. I'm, I'm um, uncomfortable. Phil, really quickly, when you take a look at this Dolphins offense and all that they've added, the new pieces, specifically Tyreek Hill, what's going to be the reason why they might have the best offense in the AFC? East. It's going to be the system. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the system that, that props up to a Tonga Vailoa. And I had a conversation with someone this week who said that, listen, they've got a lot of new coaches down there in Miami. This isn't the staff that brought to a Tonga Vailoa into the NFL. So they're not necessarily married to this guy. 
but they have been impressed by what they've seen. And I think in this system where Jimmy Garoppolo thrived because he was able to dump it off, he was consistently, annually, one of the shortest throwers in the NFL. And yet, the, my, or sorry, the San Francisco 49ers, with Garoppolo there throwing short, they led the league year after year after year in yards after catch. If Tua Tungabailoa Tom can do that same thing with the playmakers that he has and the speed that they have in Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill, this offense could be pretty damn potent. It could. And to me, it makes it interesting because look at what the Patriots have done in this offseason and the alterations they made to their defense. They've gotten smaller outside a cornerback. They've gotten faster. And I think that those players they brought in, Marcus Jones, Jack Jones, um, Terrence Mitchell ends up back on their practice squad, but he's a quicker guy. Phil, Phil and anybody else. Miles Bryant's a fast guy. Jonathan Jones is fast. You're nailing it. You got them all. All of these guys can deal with the Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle, run after catch. Guy. They, it's not that they can deal with them because that's unknown. Mm -hmm. They have the potential to do so. So, Mike, when we look at the Patriots – trying to get faster to chase down maybe Josh Allen and play zone so that they're not turning their back on him when he does decide to scramble. They've also changed their defense in a fortuitous way to deal with Miami, haven't they? Yeah, I don't think there's any question about it with what Miami has put on the table that you, you do need to be faster, you do need to be quicker. It's not just the corners, too. It's sort of the linebackers and the ability to maybe cover up some space. And again, I think we've seen flashes, especially from Mac Wilson, of being able to run, but like we haven't seen them cover very well yet so that's something I want to see and it's obviously something you're going to have to do in week one in Miami I just want to contrast once again so the Patriots remake their offensive system right and what have we talked about all summer how bad the offenses look how disjointed there's no flow to it whatsoever and and there's been you know even though they're saying otherwise there's been a lack of buy-in because they're not tasting success meanwhile Miami brings in an entirely new system they're blocking it up well the quarterback seems to fit it well the pieces on the outside are moving well the only question they've had this summer is how do they get Mike Gusecki more involved because they're trying to make him more George Kittle and quite frankly he's just a big wide receiver and that's not going to work but that's that's the one question they have offensively, other than obviously protecting Tua, which also happens to be a problem that Mac Jones and the Patriots have had this summer. Phil, Phil mentioned that swing between Brian Flores and then Mike McDaniel and how different, how they contrast as coaches. But, Mike, when you take a look at Mike McDaniel, just what are the chances that the Dolphins hit a home run with him? Well, look, I think there is certainly there has to be you have to be a little bit leery of making the switch from Flores being the ultimate hard guy to McDaniel, who, who, you know, it's Camp Kumbaya. They're just loving it down there. But he's a pretty smart guy. He's been in a bunch of different places. He's been groomed for this moment. So I, I know sometimes first year coaches don't take and he's certainly a unique personality. But thus far, all the reviews have been good. And I'm just not talking about like the press conferences. He gives good press conferences. I'm telling you, they feel good about the X's and O's down there. And the people that have watched them daily feel good about the X's and O's down there. So I guess we'll figure it out when the season starts. And, you know, invariably, they're going to have a losing streak. Is he able to command the room? Is he able to get that thing turned around? As Tom said, is he can he be the hard guy? Can he can he can he convince these guys like I got to be tough here and you're going to buy it? That's going to be the real tell. But right now, I think it's everything's coming up roses for them. Yeah, what I've heard is he is a legitimate football X's and O's whiz kid. Now, the question is, can you do both? Can you be Sean McVay with the X's and O's, but also lead, which McVay obviously has proven he's been able to do. I think Kyle Shanahan has proven on a certain level that he can do something similar. Is McDaniel in that same mold? He clearly has taken a different approach in terms of how he publicly addresses the overall operation. Maybe that'll work, Mina, because that's him being true to himself. We just have to see it. Yeah, we have a lot to see in the 2022 season.